Hello and welcome to Thaik. Today we are going to discuss about the complete project of the customer satisfaction dashboard. This is really an important dashboard when it comes to measure the performance of a business unit of a company and globally and locally. So this is going to be an interesting topic and it's going to be an interesting project. So be with me till the end of this series. This is not going to be this is not going to be a single video. It's going to be a three part series like we did for HR dashboard because um, I want to make this part by part so that you can easily understand how these things go into the flow. Now let's understand how this and what it is because whatever dashboard you are going to build, you need to understand the business logic and you need to understand how this function works. Then only you can able to easily develop the reports, whatever you want, right? So in that case, so we'll walk about a little bit of agenda, which we're going to discuss in this series. The first thing is we'll understand about the project and concept. What is customer satisfaction and how it goes. And then uh, we're going to discuss about the details about the customer satisfaction score, which is called CSAT. And then details about a net promoter score NPS. This is also an important factor. And we are going to see the difference between the CSAT and NPS. And then understanding of the sample data, how we have the sample data and from there how we can going to build the report. And then we are going to talk about the basics of the Power BI because if new persons joins in my channel, if they are visiting first time to this channel so that they can also get an idea about what the Power BI is and how we can go ahead with that. And then how we can get the data, transform data and data modeling, use of DAX and visualization. So these are the things which we are going to cover in this project. So stay tuned and let's begin. So if you are visiting to my channel first time or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. This is going to be a one week video that is usually I am publishing the videos on Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. So I'm planning to complete the whole project in these three days. It means you can learn one project in one week. So if you like this concept and if you want me to do more of these practical projects, just hit the like button and also add your comments what project I need to build in upcoming weeks. So now let's get started. Okay. Now first let's understand what is customer satisfaction. So usually for an even for a software company or even for a local vendor like the vegetable vendors. So they are selling something else to the customers, right? Whether it's a vegetable, whether it's a software project, whether it is a banking or whether it's a medical equipment. So whatever it is. So everything, if a company sells to other things, it's a kind of just selling it to the customers, whether it's a product or even for the services. For an example, if you are providing any kind of IT solutions, that's a kind of services which are going to provide to your end customers, right? So this is all you need to get capture on their feedback whether they are satisfied with your product, whether they are going to continue this product, whether they are going to promote your product or not. So by doing all these kind of survey analytics, so what you will get to know about the nature of the product and how it's going to be uh, covered in the future markets, whether it's going to be a profitable for the company or not. So the customer satisfaction is a one measure. So we can take and another is NPS. So now we will discuss about the customer satisfaction score. The customer satisfaction score is a service metric that expresses a customer's level of satisfaction with a brand, its product or services or a particular interaction during the buyer's journey. The purpose of this survey is to measure customer happiness after each meaningful touch point, like completing a transaction or before an important milestone like renewing a subscription. A customer satisfaction survey usually asks customer to rank a recent experience on a scale of 1 to 5. So in which 1 is very unsatisfied and 5 is very satisfied. 
the average response score is the customer satisfaction score. So we are me measuring it from 1 to 5. Now, what is the formula for this? So basically, we are going to ask the customer this question. How would you rate your overall satisfaction with the goods or services you received? So the response usually is extremely dissatisfied and then somewhat dissatisfied, neither satisfied or dissatisfied, somewhat satisfied and extremely satisfied. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And the formula is number of satisfied customers, which is we are going to take the 4 and 5, that's a positive sign, divided by number of survey responses into 100. That's the percentage of this customer satisfaction survey. So basically, now you may think about what might be the benchmark for that, right? Usually, whatever we do, it has to be some target at the benchmark. So usually for the C set, it actually depends on the industry. So some industry will have 70, some industry will have 40 as a benchmark. If they cross that limit, then they are a good performance. They have the good product and services. If it is below to that, then it's they are not uh, performing well. So they need to work out where they are lacking in behind to that. Okay. Now moving on to the next topic is uh, what is net promoter score NPS. So this is a another part of this one. It's net promoter score is a customer loyalty score ranging from minus hundred to plus hundred. So calculated by asking customer one question on a scale of 0 to 10. So there we have seen 1 to 5. Here we are measuring 0 to 10. How likely you are recommending this product or company to your friend or colleague? As a business metric, NPS helps company of all sizes organize around a mission, critical goal, increase their score by earning more enthusiastic customers that can be easily tracked and quantified over time. A score of 60 or higher is generally a very good NPS in any industry, but it also depends on the industry. Because if for an example, if pharma industry has a benchmark of 60 and your company is providing a 65, in that case, just an example, then you are performing well. But your company is performing 40 and the benchmark itself is 35, then also your company is performing well. So it also depends on the industry wise. Now, why does being number one offer such advantage? Because customers show greater loyalty to your product and services and they buy more from your company. Customers more reliable pay their bills. They become easier to serve and when they need help, they are usually rooting for your customer service agents rather than working against them and reduce employee turnover since people generally like working for an industry leaders. So these are the benefits if you have the huge number of, I mean the top number of NPS and CSAT. Now what is the formula for NPS? So basically the NPS calculation is percentage of promoters minus percentage of detractors. So detractors is likely they are not going to recommend your product. It means they are not satisfied with your product and service. If they have the ratings from 0 to 6 or comes under detractors and passive is, is 7 or 8, they are neither satisfied with your product or they are not happy with your product. So it's in the middle. So we are not considering this in the calculation and the 9 and 10, they are extremely likely to recommend. So these promoters, these are the promoters. So they are going to promote your product and services to their friends or colleagues. So this is the calculation for this. Now let's understand the difference between these two. So basically C set customer satisfaction score measures how satisfied a customer is with a specific area of your business. Whereas the NPS is a net promoter score which ranging from 0 to 10 measures overall customer loyalty towards your brand. So there are the links which I have taken this information is already added into their respective slides. So if you want to go and check out their website, you can just go and check out the link in the video. Okay, now let's understand the data, how it actually looks and how we are going to integrate this in, in Power BI. 
all right so this is a sample excel file i have where it's usually we are sending the surveys to the customers and when the response and we'll take the responses and analyze the data that's how it actually works so this is the feedback form which we have received after the responses and this is basically the response date and time and the unique id of the response and the country and the unit and the industry and business unit and the project id so basically the companies like if it is spread across the country as well as globally for an example like tcs and nivea they are spreading across the world globally right so in that case uh, we can get the feedback from the customers throughout the world so that's why we have the country here and if they have the multiple units inside to the company if they are manufacturing industry and they have the multiple units in the, every country then that's the reason for that and also if they have the like service providing they have the different different uh, locations that also comes under to these units and about the industry so um like uh, if you take an example of Tata, so they are into multiple industries. They are into software services. They are into manufacturing of the cars. They are into um, telecom business and everywhere. So that comes under the industry and the business units. So inside to the company, it will have the business unit also. So they will have the business solutions, customer engagement and machines and web services and everything. So those are all comes under the business units. So if you just look at the data, it's like business solution, engagement, gateway, IoT, machines, public, technology services and web, etc. So they are going to be have the multiple projects by customers, right? So we are going to get the feedback based on the project. So this is the project ID and how the source type, whether it is an email confirmation from the customers or it's an online they have entered into a form or it's a telephonic confirmation from the customers so how we have got the survey result and these are the questions which we have asked in this dummy data about the overall satisfaction by the customer for that product for that industry and for that country right so this is the satisfaction which is basically this is targeting to nps net promoter score which is the ranging from 0 to 10. so overall satisfaction these are the results and how about our company communication with the customers this is the result and the industry expertise available in our company so that we can provide the services to them and also the innovation of our product if they are liking our product or not and the quality of our product and services and the responsiveness, responsiveness of our company services and the timeliness delivery and also the overall value of our services or product so these are the metrics which they have asked with in this survey so it depends actually what are the requirements they want to ask with their customers it depends right here in this example we have these eight responses so let's analyze this data and let's come up with a value and a dashboard how it has to look like as the country has only two digits so i have a separate list here with the company with the country two digit code and the country name so that we can easily display it on the dashboard here is the report which we are going to build in this video series the net promoter scorecard and this is a donut chart with the survey result of the source type and here it's about the survey result by survey type and also by industry and also by country and also we can filter it by the response date industry source type country name and units and also how many record count of the survey we have during these periods and if you move on to the next page the survey type and this is where the main picture comes so the filter is the same and here i made a stat line and column chart where we can show the number of surveys based on the promoters or detractors which we discussed on the theory here so here we can see about how many of the people have voted in 
promoters, in detractors, and in passivists. And also, how about the overall picture? So logically, I have set this as a 60, the benchmark, sorry, the 50 as a benchmark. If the survey result, the NPS result is greater than 50, then it will show us green. If it is less than 50 and greater than 40, then it will show us yellow. And if it is less than 40, then it will treat as Right. This is all about this survey and also we can go on to the next sheet which talks about the series of operations like how we are performing from month to month when compared to previous year and current year. So the blue line indicates it's the current year and the gray line indicates the previous year. So this is all about this thing. So stay tuned for that. So that's it for this video so we are going to discuss about the further process in the upcoming videos so stay tuned for that